Hi guys, my name is Alex. In this tutorial I'm going to explain how I normally create such UV painting for 3D models and uh, end result is something like this or exactly like this. So we have a 3D model created in 3ds Max and now we have also uh, UV, UV mapped it and we created these colors and details in Photoshop. So normally what I first do is I save the UV layout in 3ds Max and open it in uh, open it in Photoshop normally it's uh, black and white but inverted so what you see now it's something like this when I start so first of all I just invert the colors holding control I on the keyboard and then I set it to multiply so everything that is white is transparent and everything that is black is opaque and I lower the opacity to 50% then I normally uh, create a shape folder with a layer and this layer is uh, supposed to make it easier when selecting uh, one object that I want to have selected just let me show you that. because if I would go and try to select it in UV map with this uh, magic wand tool it would select it by by uh, just one area and I, I don't want to have to click for every uh, area so I create this kind of layer where I can just click on the on the subject and it's selected the whole how I create it it's very simple I just go to UV map layer and use the magic wand tool and click on the outside of uh, the objects and then just make sure I select all the all the places that are going to be opaque or transparent uh, then I just hold control shift I so I make the invert selection and then I just go up to select, modify, expand and set it up to 2 pixels that way I make sure I'm not going to clip any color uh, on the edges of the model so then I just select the layer that I want to paste uh, this selection to and just pick color it just doesn't matter and just go with the paint bucket tool and click on the inside of this uh, so here it is uh, the same as the original one so after I have create this layer I just go up and create another folder which is called basic color and I just select a color that is going to be the base color for all the all the parts and I just maybe add a hue saturation adjustment layer and make it what it is called just holding the 
Alt key and clicking on uh, on adjustment layer and it makes it a clipping mask. So this arrow means that it's clipping only to this layer and it's not affecting the whole uh, the layers beneath it. Just this layer. So then I add some additional color and by selecting by being able to select uh, different objects it's very easy to add uh, additional color to any of them and if I need to uh, add a color like here uh, on the inside of this model I just go up to UV map and select it here. So we can see here I created a selection, but then I then I filled it with a color. But I also went up to modify and set contract to I don't know. I think it was ten. Yeah, ten and just uh, paint paint with a different color and this kind of effect was created so going back down you can see all these layers for different parts this one is for rockets which I was telling you about just now here I added also an effect layer uh, an effect uh, style uh, and it is an outer glow, so we can we get this dark edge around the color. Then I normally do just another folder with uh, some graphical designs that are not uh, concentrated on the shape of the parts but they are just painted on the model you can see here these stripes on the sides and here these yellow parts are also uh, in this folder then the fun part begins I create a shadow folder and create a simple A simple a uh, simple cloud render I just select uh, this kind of color and then for the foreground uh, maybe a lighter color and then just go up to filter render and clouds and we get this kind of this kind of effect then I just select uh, the part that I want the this cloud effect to be transmitted to you can just hold control and click on the layer that you had all your shapes saved and then just go up and click on mask and it will apply mask to all the selected uh, objects and then something like this pops out I used this one just for these parts I don't know why but I obviously thought it would be useful to use it just like this for these parts then I added another layer that I set the to soft light and use the black color and brush tool and different brushes you, you just need to have really uh, a large amount of brush uh, tools so you can select the appropriate ones and then just create something like this and it ends up with something like this here these parts are here 
So because it is set to soft light and it is painted with black color, it is just similar, similar like uh, burning or making the base color darker. And if you are using your uh, vacuum pen tool, pencil, uh, you can create more. Uh, you have more control on transparency of your color. Then I just added another one also on the soft light and used a different kind of uh, brush, but it's the same issue. And then on the top, I just create another layer with a normal selected and also with black color and with brush. I just create this dark gray, grayish, not both, not uh, black, but grayish uh, edges. So let's see what we have. Then, uh -huh, then I created a folder for highlights, and it's the same issue like with uh, shadows just that you paint with white color and set the layer to soft light again and it makes the base color uh, lighter not white but uh, it just makes it like here we have a bluish one and then applied uh, a white color on soft light layer and it just make it makes it a soft uh, lighter blue version of it and then I created this uh, shiny effects for for the barrels so they look like metal and this is pretty much it then special part with scratches again with in uh, uh, different folder and and with layers, I just create a black layer, totally black layer, and apply a mask to it, and, and then I invert the mask so it's totally opaque and it's not showing anything, and then just just selecting the right brush type and selecting the white color for the foreground, I just paint on the the mask of this layer and these scratches are beginning to show. I then add an effect layer for stroke and the stroke is set not to perfectly white but to grayish one and maybe set the opacity to lower than 100% and set the size so the end result is something like this when you get this black uh, base color uh, surrounded with white stroke. In the end it creates this kind of uh, wannabe scratches or indentions of the metal that it's being beaten by, I don't know, bullets from your opponent. So let me see if anything else is important. Yeah, ambient occlusion. I also create an ambient occlusion render with not with 3ds Max because it creates problems on the edges of your uh, seams and sometimes it doesn't look good and you have trouble uh, deleting these seams. So I use the Xnormal software to create uh, the ambient inclusion render and then just I add it to the this file and set it to multiply and maybe I decrease the opacity to 80% because XNormal really creates dark ambient occlusions and if necessary I add some masks and select different parts that are not wanted to be uh, 
darkened with ambient occlusion. And when I create everything, this is pretty much the fuse map for this model. And then just save it, and then I also create a specular map, which is created in a way that a lot of people disagree that it's okay, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the project you're working on. So here I just selected all these all these uh, folders and just holding the alt and click and drag it drag it into the specular map. Let me show you what I mean. And here we have them in the specular map and then when they are selected I just hit Control E on the keyboard and they are merged together. Here we have them all in one layer. Then I desaturate it holding Control Shift U on the keyboard. And then I just add uh, adjustment layer levels and set the levels. So we get this really dark parts that are not going to be shiny in your render when your light is moving in your scene and we get these uh, light parts that are going to be reflective and then just save it as a specular map and apply it to your model in your game so this was a quick overview on how the how I create this kind of effects for game props that are in the end looking like this. So I hope you learned something new. Oh yes, I just want to tell you how I created this kind of look where you know, the paint is paint is looking like it's worn out I just create a layer and just add a map a map to it a map what I'm asking mask not a map <laughs> mask to it and then just select uh, the black color and appropriate brush and then just quickly brush some color off using the mask this way if I don't like it I can still go back and just delete the mask and I have the we can concentrate on this one I still have the basic color uh, intact I'm holding shift and clicking on mask to make it uh, visible or not. I also use soft light for color layers so they are not just plain uh, color. They are kind of integrated in the base color. So this is pretty much it. Thanks guys for watching and till next time. Bye.